Hello everyone, Mucklug Douglas Bartholomew Original Death Squad the Fourth here, and today I have two topics I want to talk to you about which every player should know. If you prefer to live in ignorance, then just trust that the rest of this video is amazing, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. For the rest of you progeny thirsty for knowledge, let's get to the first topic in today's lesson, break bars. A break bar, also known as a defiance bar, is underneath most higher difficulty monsters. A break bar is visible in three flavors. The gray segmented bar, or the locked bar, shows that the enemy is completely immune to all forms of crowd control. The teal bar shows they can be hit by crowd control to damage the bar. This means that if you use a stun on an enemy with a teal bar, they won't be stunned, but it will damage the bar, lowering it. Just imagine that CC hits the teal bar in the same way that normal damage hits a red hit point bar. And the final flavor, a brown bar. Similar to the gray bar, the brown bar signifies that the target is immune to all crowd control, but that it is recharging and it is about to turn teal again. It's telling you to get ready, but don't waste your CC skills yet. Standard usage of a boss monster's defiance bar would go like this. 1. You're fighting a boss monster, possibly with other people. 2. The boss gets the teal bar. 3. Everyone uses their crowd control abilities. If enough people use them, the bar will hit empty and a major effect will happen based on the monster. 4. The bar will lock and the boss will be immune to further CC until it becomes teal again. Now what happens when you break the defiance bar? It varies based on most enemies, but the most common thing to happen is that the boss will be stunned or knocked down. The action that they were in the middle of will be interrupted and they will gain a debuff called Exposed, which causes them to take 50% more damage for 5 seconds. For most targets in the game, when you see a teal bar... <laughs> your CC buttons. At the highest level of play, you would want to wait for key moments. Example, on the final fight of the Dredge Fractal, you have a lot of opportunities to break the boss's break bar, but because of the 50% bonus damage taken, the best time to do it is when he's underneath the lava buckets. Then you can dump lava on him and break the break bar simultaneously, then hit him for hundreds of thousands of damage. If his break bar was broken early and isn't recharged when it's time for the lava bucket, you would lose this window of opportunity. Those the basics of break bars, and that knowledge alone will cover most break bar usage in the game. Now for some advanced break bar techno battle. If you were ever uncertain about which of your abilities would actually wound a break bar, you could check at this webpage, link in description. You can see here that soft control effects such as fear, taunt, immobilize, slow, chilled, blind, weakness, and crippled will chip away at break bars like a dot, but hard control effects hit break bars very, very hard all at once. Simply find the column for your class and scroll down through each ability and you can see which ones work. For example, we can see that a warrior's full counter does 100 damage to an enemy's break bar, but a necromancer's Whale of Doom Warhorn skill does 200 or 300 if traded. For whatever build you like to play, know what skills to smash when you see a break bar. As a ranger, I might have a second pet that I only swap to that is good for break bars such as the Electric Wyvern. I can swap to the Wyvern the moment I see a bar. It will have all of its cooldowns available. I immediately tell it to use Lightning Assault, and then moments later it will use Wing Buffet, doing two big break bar hits. Some classes are better at shredding break bars than others. Warriors are quite good at the job with their mace skill set. If your group unloads all of their crowd control against a target and are unable to break the bar, the bar will regenerate back to full. You may have to ask everyone, don't waste your CC moves until everyone is ready again. Then have everyone unleash their crowd control again simultaneously. But again, for you new players, you shouldn't have any trouble breaking a teal bar until you're in top tier content. I hope you all took notes because it will be on the test. The second item on today's agenda is combos. If you don't know about combos in Guild Wars 2, there are some semi-hidden interactions between many abilities in the game. We're going to break this down as easily as possible. Step one, you need a move that says it's a combo field. These are usually big circles on the ground. For example, my Ranger Torch 5 skill makes a large fire field. Note, you cannot use enemies' fields for combos, so don't waste time trying. Then you need an ability that says it's a combo finisher. My Warhorn 5 says it's a blast finisher. Let's see what happens if I use Torch 5, then use Warhorn 5 while standing in it. Did you see the message Area Might that flashed in the air? The Ranger Warhorn 5 gives six stacks of might, so the other three I've got were from the combo, and it was two others in the area as well. Now let's try going through the fire field with Greatsword 3, which is a leap combo finisher. 
As you can see, it gave us a fire aura. There are many auras in the game. The fire aura gives you might each time you are struck and burns foes that hit you with a one second cooldown per attacker. Finally, let's try using a projectile finisher in it. The message burning flashes, meaning that in addition to its original effects, those projectiles will apply burning to the enemy. So to recap, while you're in a friendly combo field or while shooting through it, use a projectile, blast, whirl, or leap finisher ability for an extra effect. Some abilities like Ranger Longbow 1 may only have a percentage chance to count as a finisher. It is indeed a projectile, but since it's spammed, it doesn't perform combos on every shot. Here is one of the most commonly used Ranger combos in PvP. Using the smoke scale pet, we can order it to make a smoke field. Then by using a blast finisher, we can stealth up to five nearby allies for three seconds. In PvP matches, I like to tell the team, going to smoke as we approach mid, and everyone can use blast finishers in the smoke, which stacks the duration of stealth on the entire team. I can also leap finisher through the smoke to add three seconds of self stealth, but that one isn't AOE, so my pet is revealed before I am. Now that I've shown you the basics of combos, take a look at this webpage from the wiki, link is in the description, there is a list of all the possible combos in the game and what their results are. Knowing what options are available to your class can change how you play. For example, when I'm healing on my druid, if the party is afflicted by a condition and Condi Cleanse is on cooldown, I can Astral Form 2, 3 to do a Blast Finisher in a Light Field, which is an AOE Condition Cleanse for the entire party. Be sure to see which of your abilities have combo fields or combo finishers in the text to up your gameplay. As always, if you can think of anything on these topics that might help someone else, please put it in the comments. If you enjoyed the content or found it useful, you can support the channel by liking the video for the YouTube algorithm or subscribing. If you want to help increase the quality of future content, there is a link to my Patreon down below. And lastly, you can ask me questions live any night after after 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time over at Twitch. Feel free to use me as a resource. Hit the follow button there to be notified when we are live. That's it for today. Happy gaming!